Welcome back. In this video, I'm going over why I love Google Sheets for using spreadsheets, and I'll be going over how to set up your Google Drive account, how to use the basics of Google Sheets, and the specific features of what I really love about it. So if you're a beginner, this is a great video to watch. If you're experienced with Excel but new to Google Sheets, this is also a great video to check out. If you're new here, my name's Amanda. You're watching the Business Finance Coach, where I simplify the technicalities of business and money to help you succeed because I truly believe the world needs your business. I give away a free business spreadsheet template, which is a basic accounting worksheet. And right now I have a free workshop on the five steps to master your accounting and taxes. Check out the link above or in the description box below this video. Let's jump into why I love Google Sheets and everything you need to know about getting started with Google Sheets from setting up your account to some of my favorite features of using Google Sheets for your spreadsheets. Okay, let's jump in. So the first thing I love about Google Sheets is it is free and unlike Excel, we don't have different versions. Instead, Google Sheets is like a website, like Facebook, it's online. And you can create a free account by heading over to drive.google.com. And here you can set up a free account in Google Drive which includes all sorts of apps, one of which is Sheets, Google Sheets. It also includes Word and other, lots of other cool features comparable to Microsoft Office. However, it's all based online. If you have a Gmail account for your email through Gmail, you automatically have a Google Drive account. From inside your Gmail account, just click on the little blocks of nine circles right next to where it says Google and your account name. Click on that block and then you can see all of the apps that are included in Google Drive and you can head down to Google Drive or Google Sheets directly. I usually use Google Drive because this is where you can organize all of your sheets and documents and any other types of files that you create, which you can check out by clicking the plus new button from within Drive and you can see all of the options here. Heading back to drive.google.com, if you want to create a Drive account without using email, you can. You can check out this page and it will either say create an account or you can click go to drive, which it knows I already have an account, and then click create an account right here. And you can select whether it's a personal account, a child account, or a business account. Here we are inside a template I have that we're gonna use as an example. So the first thing to notice is that it is very similar to Excel. This is a workbook, a spreadsheet workbook, and it's filled with worksheets. And those are tabs that you can see along the bottom. The real different thing to Excel is that we have a URL up here at the top. And this is the URL for this spreadsheet and all the worksheets inside. One of my all-time favorite features of Google Sheets and what we use in my business, in my program that helps small business owners with their accounting and taxes and spreadsheets is that you can add people into your template. This can be super convenient, like in my program, where people can add me in to help out, or if you wanna add in someone to delegate various tasks to in a spreadsheet. Alternatively, if you do keep your finances in a spreadsheet, come tax time, you need to share with your tax professional, you can share them that way. And what you don't have to worry about is different versions that then you update something or the bookkeeper updates something or your assistant updates something and it's not updated in the copy that the accountant has or that the possible investor has or that someone has who's using these reports. So in order to share the template, head up to the right-hand corner, that big green share button, click share, 
and then type in the email of the person you want to add in. You can give them rights as an editor, as just a commenter, or just a viewer. So I recommend usually using commenter, but you do need to be an editor in order to see the equations in different cells. You can type in a message and then press send. Now over in my email, you can see I just got a spreadsheet shared with me from Amanda Russell, and the title of that spreadsheet is in quotation marks here, and we can even see a little preview of it down here. So here's what I wrote in that box, check out my spreadsheet, and we can just click to open. Two great other features of, related to this one is that if someone does do something to your spreadsheet and mess something up, you can always revert back to prior versions of the spreadsheet by going into history. You can see under file in the top left corner, hover over versions midway down on the drop down menu and then you can click see version history. If you are gonna be sharing the spreadsheet with someone, you could finalize and name a version by clicking these three dots and name version so that you know that was the last time you finalized it. Next, the whole reason it's so awesome to share this with someone is because of the commenting feature. So with my clients, when they're setting up the spreadsheets, if they have questions, they can comment directly in the template, directly where the issue is. So if you're having an issue with a column, why is this column not updating? You can go ahead and right click directly in the cell where you have the question and select comment. This is where you can tag someone. So I'll tag my email and then start writing the question. Why isn't this right? And then we can just press comment. We can also assign things to people as well. Then when you come back into the template, let's say you've been having lots of conversations. How do you know where they are? Well, when you look along the bottom at your worksheets, you can see there's a little comment chat box next to report income statement. So that's one way to identify where they are. The other way is on any page, you can click this little chat box picture up in the right corner. And this will show you a list that you can scroll through of all comments. And you can click on it to be taken directly to that comment anywhere in your spreadsheet. You can also reply right in here or in the spreadsheet. So in my program with small business owners, I have a lot of templates that cover everything that's needed for accounting and taxes so that the business owner doesn't need to know it. But in order for my clients and participants to use my templates, they must make a copy because this template is a website. It's its own individual website link. You need to create your own for you to be able to edit it. So you go file and then make a copy. Then you'll be able to choose what to name it and where to save it in your folders on Google Drive. Once you click OK, it will reload in the next window and now you'll be able to edit any of the cells. The next really cool part of the spreadsheet has to do with adding worksheets into a workbook. So because again, I use a lot of templates for small businesses that cover everything they need to know about accounting and taxes, you know, situations change, you might invest in something and then you need a new worksheet for whatever reason, right? We're editing and changing spreadsheets to make them useful. So the really cool thing is if you make a template or you make a new worksheet set up in one workbook, you can easily add this into another workbook without needing to like select and copy and paste everything because that never works quite right. Instead, all you do on Google Sheets, because we're dealing with web addresses, we're able to right click next to the worksheet and go ahead and say, copy to existing spreadsheet. If we head over to the spreadsheet that we wanna copy that template into, we select the URL of this spreadsheet. And then we can just paste that URL here, or you can search for the name of the spreadsheet and select it that way. 
I'm going to click select. You can see it's copying over and if I come over to the template I copied it into and I go all the way to the right, here you can see copy of report income statement. In order to change the name of your worksheets, you just double click in the bottom where the words are. And same thing for the name of the spreadsheet template as a whole, you just double click to rename. On each worksheet name, to the right you see that little drop down arrow, and when you click it you have a bunch of options. This is where you can delete a page or even hide a sheet if you're not using it right now, and I'll show you where to find it in a second. You can also protect a sheet so that people can't change that one. You can also change the color. So I can click the blue to add that color to the bottom of the worksheet. Another super convenient tool is to the left of our worksheets, we can click the All Sheets button and this shows us a list of every sheet that's in this workbook and you can see it also shows their color so if you're referring to certain worksheets a lot you might want to color code them so that they stand out to you it's just to help you work faster and make things more convenient also you can identify any hidden sheets so if you see this worksheet that's in light gray where it says source data it's currently hidden if i click it that immediately unhides it and we'll see it down here in our worksheet list along the bottom tabs. We can click the plus sign to add a worksheet. Next we need to talk about cells. So just some basics to be able to talk about any cell in a workbook. We need to know that along the top we have columns and these are lettered A, B, C, D, and so forth. Once we get to the end of the alphabet, it starts over A, 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 B, A, C, and so forth all the way through the A's, and then we'll have a B and all the way through the alphabet again, and then a C and, and so forth. And then it will start over and add more than one. And so they continue going that way. Rows are a bit more straightforward. They're numbered and they just keep going. If you get to the bottom, you can always add more rows and put the number you wanna add right here, click add. To identify the cell for total business income, under the month of February, we look at column G and see that it's row 72. So that's how we refer to that cell in equations or in talking about it. A really cool feature is being able to freeze rows and columns, which you do by selecting a row, going up to view at the top and selecting freeze, and you can select up to the current row, row five, which allows us to hold our months in place as we scroll up and down so we could take a look more closely at individual expense items. Same thing goes for columns. Now if we select column E, view, freeze, up to current column, we have no problem having both the month and our accounts move with us so that we can look at things more closely. A super convenient feature is also the undo button, and you can see the shortcut keys in parentheses there. On a Mac, it's command, or on a PC, it's control, and then Z. So I can go right back and undo everything I just did. You can also redo by pressing the forward arrow or doing the shortcut with command or control and Y. A few more shortcuts that are really convenient. First is being able to select a large quantity of data very quickly. I'm going to click in cell A1, the date cell, and then I'm going to press Shift, Command, or Control on a PC, and the right arrow. That selected the entire top row. This is an entry sheet for entering your transactions from a bank account, credit card, or loan account. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to holding Command and Shift and just press the down arrow. Now that right there in two clicks selects all data in this entry sheet. Pressing Command or Control A will often select all data on a page or within certain boundaries. From here, I can sort the data by coming up to Data tab. And here we have options to sort range or create a filter or slicer, which are all different ways 
to sort the data. So first I'm going to click sort range. This is a common feature that we use in our accounting records that are in spreadsheets because you might want to quickly, you know, sort your data by a certain account or company paid or date just on this one entry sheet. We have other reports that total up your accounts and your company paids from all of your bank accounts and liability accounts and loan accounts, credit cards, but sometimes it's convenient to look at the data on one entry sheet. The sort range feature allows us to check the box that data has header row and then choose what we want to sort the data by. Let's say we chose date, it then says A to Z, and then we could select another column to sort by, such as choose account. Then if we say sort, we'll see the data shifts and it's now in order by date and then account alphabetically. I'm gonna undo that change and now you can see it went back to having the entire area selected. We'll go back up to data and I wanna show you how to create a filter. Once we click create filter, you can see these little filter icons to the right of each of our columns. If we click company paid, we can first select under filter by value to clear all the options and then you can see they're gone. Now we can select one company paid option. Let's say we want to see Sally Sue. We click OK and we find the one item that's under Sally Sue. You can also in addition select date ranges, accounts, whatever you want. You can also change the filter by going back in and clearing it again and saying, okay. I press clear so everything's gone, but if we say select all, then everything will come back again. So that's all for the basics of Google Sheets. These are the features I love, how we're able to work with other people, easily copy worksheets into other workbooks, and have everything saved online where it's super convenient to pull it up on any computer and we don't have to worry about different versions or who made the last change, where's the most updated copy, etc. I will have more videos about Google Sheets and specifically using Google Sheets for your accounting and tax records for your business. So check out the description below this video for more details. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like so that YouTube knows. And if you'd like to support me on this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be notified when I post a new video, you can click the bell icon next to the subscribe button. Check out the description box below this video for more details on my free resources. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments below this video if you have additional questions. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye.